Hi, um, this is a follow-up video um, about uh, investing in Bitcoin. Uh, I, I think I wasn't, um, I, I can make myself more clear what the problem is. So I think the best way, or the most profitable way to invest in Bitcoin is to buy and hold. Um, so buy a certain amount of Bitcoins and just hold them um, uh, for a few years. Um, and uh, probably that will be the best investment you ever made. Uh, but the problem is that um, if it works out that this investment becomes a very big part of your portfolio, uh, uh, let's say you buy, uh, now the price is $140, let's say you succeed in buying the, somewhere the coming months, the coming half year, around $100. Um, uh, and uh, let's say it works out and in uh, three, four years, the price is not $100, but say um, maybe $1,000 or $5,000 uh, or maybe even $10,000. So that would mean that if it's 1000 it's tenfolding your capital that you invested. If it would be $10,000, it would not be tenfolding, but it would be a hundredfolding your investment. I think chances are high for that to happen, though I think it will take longer than most people expect. So I would think that $1,000 probably will only be hit. Uh, it take probably two years from here. I don't think it will be next year huh? and certainly not this year. That's just speculation. But so that's what I'm expecting. So let's say you invest two years, two, three years. I think you can tenfold your capital take uh, another two years so that would be like five years I think you can hundredfold your capital the problem however if you do a buy and hold is that um, it becomes uh, let's say today you invest let's say when it corrects uh, um, if it corrects uh, and you succeed at buying let's say around 100 or maybe even let's say around 60 um, yes, I think the chances are high for that to happen still. Um, I could be totally wrong, but we will see. But let's say, let's take 100. How much percent of your capital would be wise to invest? Personally, currently, I have 16% of my capital invested in Bitcoin. But if $60 would be hit the coming uh, half year, I'll probably kick that up gradually to around 30% of my capital. That's a lot. I think most investors would not feel secure. Um, but let's say you decide to do 10%. Uh, so, um, and then the coming three to five years, eh, let's say it hundred folds. Or let's say, let's start with 10 folding. Eh? You put 10% in of your capital today. In three years, it's 10 times higher in value. And let's say your other investments did just normal which would be around 5% per year, which is already uh, not too bad. Huh? But um, then, ac then actually your 10% that you invest in Bitcoin today becomes actually times 10 is 100%. The other 90% stays about the same, a little bit up. But as you can see now, ha half of your capital, huh? like the 10 became 100 and that 90 became like, I don't know, 110 or something. So you have 110 portfolio and then you have now 100 Bitcoin. So basically your Bitcoin exposure is now 50%. Eh? Half of your capital is now in Bitcoin. Yeah. Now, any money manager will say that that is a very high risk eh? to have half of your money invested in, um, in one um, asset, eh? uh, even if that would be gold, uh, that would be a very high risk. And my personal opinion is, even if that is stocks, eh, a stock index fund, 50% uh, is very high risk. And I personally also think that if you put 50% in real estate or 50% in saving accounts, uh, that's actually also very high risk. Eh? So, um, but it certainly is high risk if you put it in Bitcoin, 50%. Eh? So, um, 
um, what to do. Huh? Well, most money managers will advise you to diversify and to sell off some of your bitcoins. Huh? Um, and that's what I've been doing up until today. Hmm? That's why it's only 16%, because if I would not have sold a single Bitcoin uh, today, it would not be 16%, it would be somewhere around 40%. Hmm? So, um, um, so I've been following eh, traditional investment approach uh, when investing in Bitcoin too, eh? so to reduce my exposure as it goes up. So, um, but I think it's, it's wise to change that for me too. Huh? I think I would like to not sell Bitcoins anymore, even if they become a big part of my portfolio. Huh? But the problem is how do you justify that? Huh? Because from a risk management perspective, that does not, is, is not a wise decision. Hmm? So, I think that yeah, you need to shift uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. If you approach a Bitcoin investment from an investment perspective, you won't get there. Huh? You will have to diversify. However, if you approach Bitcoin as um, money, as I explained in my previous video, uh, that's so and so, eh? because that's just actually I think that's a shortcut that also doesn't make a lot of sense. Hey, if you say, okay, it's money, so I don't have to diversify. It keeps its purchasing power. I can have all my capital in sound money. Eh? Uh, gold books apply that too to gold. Eh? And they say, uh, but actually the problem with that reasoning is that, well, gold uh, used to be money. It's not money today anymore. Eh? And the consequence of that is that it is very volatile gold. Eh? Sometimes it goes up uh, 10 years in a row. Uh, five folding uh, its purchasing power and sometimes it goes down 20 years in a row for, from 1980 to 2000 for example and it, it loses 90% of its purchasing power so that's why I don't think that's a wise thing to do with gold eh? treat it as money and have all your capital in gold eh? I think it's m much better idea to treat it just as a speculative investment eh? um, um, so Doing it with Bitcoin is also not fair. Huh? Sure, Bitcoin can be the future of money and maybe one day it will be widely used and very stable. Uh, but until then, uh, today it's, it's not at all. It is not widely used. It is actually very volatile, very small project still. And um, um, it's, yeah, it does not have the stability of money. Not at all. So I don't think that's gonna work. I think the way to approach it is uh, as a, an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurs, eh, uh, they do have very concentrated portfolios. Huh? Um, eh, any entrepreneur that uh, becomes rich huh? uh, and uh, that you know, eh, uh, for example, Bill Gates, eh, uh, he became rich by having a very concentrated portfolio in Microsoft. Yeah. And um, so when he started Microsoft, he split it with Paul, ba uh, sorry, with um, Paul Allen. Eh? It was 65% for him, 35% for his partner. That was the deal they made. Um, of course, Bill Gates came from a, a richer family. I think his father was a lawyer or something. Uh, they had some capital, but Bill Gates was still young. Um, so what did he do? He, he focused on his company, he built his company. Gradually he gave some shares away to other uh, people that joined the company. Actually, uh, not giving away, <laughs> uh, selling. <laughs> uh, but um, um, he did not um, sell off his stock uh, the first few years, eh? uh, I think um, he started, I, I'm not sure of the dates there, eh, but I would estimate around five to ten years that he just worked on the company. Eh? He built the company. The stock went up a lot in value because the, the company uh, had a lot of uh, profit and was uh, expanding 
and um, and so the, the stocks went up a lot if, in value. But he was not selling to diversify. No, he was keeping them. Eh? And he only started diversifying once it went to the stock market, Microsoft, and once he could sell his shares for a very high price. Eh? Um, then he started diversifying. And in fact, he did that from day one. And in fact, every single day, he has sold Microsoft shares. And that's now 30 years, uh, 20 to 30 years, every single day, he has sold some of his Microsoft share stock. Uh, and um, today, he only owns around 9% of Microsoft, whereas he started with 65%. Eh? So, um, it, I think even as an entrepreneur, it is wise to diversify, but not at the beginning. Eh? Um, not when it is like growing very fast eh? um, and not before it is valued by the mainstream market. Eh? Because that's what happened when, when he went public uh, with his Microsoft company. Suddenly you are on the mainstream market and the valuation of your company goes up a lot. Eh? Um, uh, whereas before you're on the mainstream market, uh, it is very hard to get proper valuation. Huh? Um, with Bitcoin, of course, it is already on exchanges being traded. Traded, but those are, of course, Bitcoin exchanges. Uh, it is far from mainstream. Hmm? Um, so, if you approach Bitcoin as an entrepreneur and not as an investor, huh? um, you can justify buying a certain buying or acquiring through work a certain amount of bitcoins and um, or through mining yeah, which is also work um, and uh, and uh, and keep them and not sell them uh, even when it becomes 50 percent of your capital and even when it becomes 90 percent of your capital eh, you can keep them though i think it is very good idea to be very conscious about that eh? Because if it becomes 90% of your capital, uh, you can lose 90% of your capital eh, at that point, if, if suddenly it fails. And I was surprised to discover that Bill Gates, from day one when he was on the stock market, started selling Microsoft shares and continued to do so every day, which shows that he was very aware of the high risk that he had in Microsoft. Eh, and um, by gradually selling, his shares, he got the best price imagine, imaginable. Eh? By spreading the sale of his stock over 20, 30 years, eh? uh, every day a little bit, he got the best price. Hmm? So, um, yeah, approaching it as an entrepreneur, uh, I think is, uh, is, a, is, a, is something that I like. Um, it's very easy if you work for your Bitcoins, eh? Then you can say, look, I'm, I'm starting a Bitcoin company. Uh, I'm going to earn uh, Bitcoins and I'm not going to sell them Bitcoins. No, I'm going to keep them. Eh? And then you have actually two business going on. Eh? You have the one that acquires Bitcoins and eh? the one that earns Bitcoins. You have the other part of your business where your savings or Bitcoins eh? that you don't sell, eh? but you let it grow in purchasing power. Eh? I think that should uh, put you into... Um, I think that's the way to uh, become rich the coming 10 to 20 years. Hmm? Um, so, uh, yeah, that's my idea. Uh, I, that makes sense to me. Uh, and um, it's not my idea. It makes sense to me. Uh, and, um, and I hope it's uh, helpful for you too. And um, thanks for watching. Bye.